Okay, this is really starting to get ridiculous. Didn't Muda just tell you guys a couple of days ago not to join the cyber war? Didn't he warn you that if you tried to become a hacktivist and fight against Russia, that things would probably just end badly for you? Because let's be real, so many of you that updated your heckin' profile pictures on Reddit and Twitter to have a Ukrainian flag filter, are not real black hat hackers. I don't care how many times you watched Mr. Robot on Netflix or how many times you've booted into Kali Linux. Being a hacker is a lot like becoming an MMA fighter. You can't just do it on a whim because you had an emotional reaction to something in the news. It takes years of training and discipline just for you to be able to get in the ring and not immediately be annihilated. Same thing applies to hackers in the digital ring, if you want to call it that. Now, I don't know if you guys really know what I'm talking about, but all over the internet, and you can especially see this on Reddit, Twitter, and Discord in particular, which is hilarious because all of these are botnet services that real hackers typically don't use, at least not without going to great lengths to maintain their OPSEC on these services. But anyway, on these platforms, people are trying to form hacktivist groups to attack the heckin' Russians for invading Ukraine. Now, the worst part about this new trend is the fact that so many innocent people are suffering from these various hacking and DDoS attacks. Websites that belong to private businesses are being taken down because the Russian government invaded Ukraine. And even if you attack Russian government sites and services directly, you are still going to be hurting innocent Russian citizens. And honestly, if you go and attack a government site, you're probably going to be hurting some of the poorest and most vulnerable Russian citizens. Because in every country, you typically have people like the old or the poor or the disabled being much more reliant on government services. Well, if those services go down, then those most vulnerable people suffer. Now, most recently, the event that actually inspired me to make this video is malware that has been injected into the Node IPC package as a form of protest against Russia invading the Ukraine. Now, what this malware does, if we go ahead and take a look at this with love from america.txt is it puts a file on your desktop with the same name and we can see in the text written here, I'm not gonna go over and read it, but uh, it's written in several different languages and it's basically telling people, hey, we're all human, man. Borders don't exist, they don't matter. We're all brothers and we shouldn't be fighting with one another. You gotta follow your own morality, man. You know, the kind of stuff that you normally hear at anti-war protests. And I, I will admit, I do agree with some of this, at least the part about, you know, not fighting your brothers, because literally Ukraine and Russia, if you don't know the history about these uh, countries, they were both part of the USSR. Uh, so there is a serious probability that right now, people in the Ukrainian army fighting people in the Russian army, you probably have brothers fighting brothers right now, which I think is particularly horrible. So, yeah, it goes ahead and it puts this text file on your desktop. Doesn't seem so bad, right? I mean, yeah, I guess it's really fucked up to just spam some text out onto everybody's desktop and, you know, fill up their hard drive space with an extra 4.5 kilobytes of stuff that they don't want. But in terms of actual damage, this isn't that bad, right? Oh, I almost forgot to mention, this malware also recursively deletes every single file on your disk by replacing all of its contents with heart emojis. Really peaceful, right? I guess in this case, this is following the CNN definition of a peaceful protest because here we have an attack or here we have a CVE rating of 9.8, about as high and about as bad as malware can get. So this node module, as it currently stands, is 
basically ransomware, except it's even worse than ransomware, because at least with ransomware, you have a chance of paying some Bitcoin or if we're dealing with a smarter hacker, some Monero to get your data back. But there's no way for you to get your data back from this guy, because we're dealing with a hacker that is driven by ideology and not money. Oh, and one other important thing to point out about this malware is that apparently the disk erasing part only seems to affect devices that have a Russian or a Belarusian IP address. But you know, that's kind of a moot point because we live in an international world. Even the most tech illiterate normies oftentimes use VPNs that might just so happen to give them a Russian or a Belarusian IP address. So I guess fuck them if they happen to download and run um, not even just this package, but anything that depends on it, which we'll get into later, because this is basically a supply chain attack. Uh, but yeah, fuck them, right? If they happen to have their VPN on. Or maybe you're from another country and you just happen to be stuck in Russia or Belarus right now. Well, you better not update any of your software if that's the case. Or your hard drive might get wiped out with hard emojis. All in the name of peace and not war. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, if this node IPC package is malware, then I'm just simply not going to download it. Like, you know, what the hell is node IPC anyway? If I read the description, this just seems like a bunch of gobbledygook. Well, yeah, you've probably never downloaded node IPC directly, but there is a lot of software out there that depends on node IPC, like Vue.js, which is one of the most popular JavaScript frameworks in existence. In fact, at least as far as I know, I mean, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that it is uh, the most popular one that doesn't have corporate backing because I know that two of the more popular ones are React and Angular, but those are backed by Facebook and Google respectively. Um, and maybe jQuery is a little bit more popular, which honestly is unfortunate in current year. Uh, but in terms of most used non-corporate frameworks, I'm pretty sure it's Vue.js. And one of its core packages, Vue CLI, it depends on this Node IPC package. Unity, the cross-platform game engine, also <laughs> depends on this Node IPC. Although luckily, the Unity devs were able to remove the Unity dependency uh, on Node IPC. So you can go ahead and update Unity Hub without having to worry about this anymore. But the point is, this software, it has a whole lot of downloads, as you can see. It's got almost 5 million downloads per month because it is a dependency on a lot of other very popular software. In fact, this person, ZLW9991, put together a list of software that depends on Node IPC, which I'll go ahead and leave in the description of this video. I really recommend that you take a look through this list or at least control F it with uh, some of the software that you use to make sure it won't be affected by the supply chain attack because it's a very, very long list. And also, if you have the free time, go ahead and add any additional software uh, that isn't included down there if it's affected by this so that hopefully more people are not going to end up getting their hard drives wiped or getting a nonsense text file generated on their desktop. Now, I've already gone and done some mitigations myself. In case you guys didn't know, I've been trying to teach myself Vue.js so that I can do some web development. But for now, I've just gone ahead and removed it because of this major security issue. And one of the primary reasons that I chose Vue.js is because of the fact that it's more community driven and it's not uh, corporate back software. In general, I try to avoid corporate back software because I know that there is no end to the greed of corporations. I wouldn't put it past them to embed spyware in the dependencies of their software so that they can just mine a little bit more data from me and gain just a little bit more profit from me. But this guy here, Brandon Miller, and I'm not doxing him by the way because his real name is literally on his GitHub, so that's on him. Uh, but Brandon has exposed a serious problem with the open source community, which is the fact that development of open source software is ultimately community driven. It's not corporatized. We don't really have a structured system of people reviewing code and then a uh, company's reputation is going to be on the line and their stock price and a bunch of people are going to lose money uh, if something goes horribly wrong. 
We just have a bunch of random people who support the principles of free software and helping each other out. Everything is based on trust. And for the most part, it works. Some of the most important, widely used software that people use, like the Linux kernel, the GNU core utils, and many, many web browsers that are based on Chromium, which is also an open source project. But as we can see, all it takes to compromise this whole system is for one person to build up some credibility and then inject malware into a software dependency because that person is blinded by ideology. Like seriously, this one guy is responsible for more than 40,000 people being hacked or experiencing service disruptions from his malware, at least according to uh, the stats on NPM, since his Peace Not War module has over 42,000 downloads, mostly as a result of it being made a dependency of Node IPC. And to close this video, I want to address Brandon and everybody who thinks like him directly. You didn't have to do this, ma'am. I looked at your social media, I checked out your YouTube channel, and it looks like you have a pretty good life. You've made a lot of contributions to the free software community. In your free time, you like to ride motorcycles. What more could a man possibly want out of life? But besides the good parts, your actions tell me that you probably spend too much time on social media, specifically Reddit and Twitter by the looks of things. And participating in this NPC-like behavior of just caring way too much about the current thing that the media is pushing. And I don't know if you know this, Brandon, but your actions have not just ruined your reputation as an open source developer, but your actions are actually criminal and could land you in prison for up to 10 years. And I'm gonna be real with you, Brandon, you're not the kind of guy that's gonna do well in prison. I can tell just by looking at you that you are a very soft man. Hell, you're basically a clean shave away from being a femboy. And again, I'm making some assumptions here, but your likely political affiliations are probably going to preclude you from the protection of white gangs like AB or the Woods or whatever prison gangs you have in your area. So you do the math. A soft man? Spending 10 years in prison without the protection of his race equals Brandon getting passed around like a fat blunt at a Rastafarian wedding. Learn from Brandon's mistakes, kids. Don't spend too much time on Twitter and Reddit and think that you're a hacktivist because it could lead to a 10 year long supply chain attack on your bussy. Like and comment to hack the algorithm and have a great day.